Manufacturers can pick many ways to mine their history and heritage. And uh, for a manufacturer like Porsche, <coughs> it can take the form of homage, like the several iterations of the Speedster that have been built on various 911 platforms, um, or the uh, RS and RSK tributes that are done on the Boxster uh, 718. Um, or it can be something uh, more akin to the actual spirit of an older model, as Porsche did quite famously with the reintroduction of the 911R. And the car I'm driving right now reminds me of that 911R for one obvious reason, uh, and that is the seat I'm sitting in. This uh, sports seat, very comfortable sports seat, a little snug, but not overly so, uh, with this wonderful, iconic houndstooth check cloth fabric. And uh, it's also in this beautiful aniline leather uh, surround, uh, which is also very reminiscent of the tone and quality of the leather that you'd find in a 1960s car. Such as the car I'm driving today, this 2023 Porsche 911 Sport Classic. Now, I won't mention the name of a fairly well-known company that takes middle-aged Porsches and reimagines them into something akin to an early performance 911, but this very much has that spirit of the first generation cars in the latest shell. There are various visual cues that remind us of those early 911s and in fact here on the Audrain Museum Network you doubtless have seen me driving that 1967 911S and uh, you'll remember that I waxed eloquently about all the things that made that car feel so Porsche and behind the wheel of this new Porsche, I have to say again, as I said in that video, that Porsche's done a great job of maintaining a brand identity behind the wheel. This 911 may certainly not feel like that 911, but you know that you are in a Porsche. And some of the things that I really liked very much about that 911 are present in this one. Um, first of all, obviously, it's uh, rear wheel drive and it's got a manual gearbox. In place of the five speed, we have a full seven on order. And uh, right now I'm burbling around town in normal mode. The uh, 550 horsepower at my command, at rest. And it's also an interesting thing about these newer 911s. The selection of, of modes and the effect they have on ride is quite noticeable. Um, certainly as a point of reference, the uh, Porsche company certainly feels that normal is most other brands sport. And uh, clicking it up into sport, we just heard a little deepening of the exhaust note. And uh, I know that I will feel this in the ride as well which here in Rhode Island can be a mixed blessing. But uh, nonetheless, I certainly feel in the steering that uh, whatever small sneeze room was present at uh, top center in the wheel is almost gone now. You, you touch the wheel and the car moves. And uh, obviously that's what you want as well. Um, another way that this uh, 911 uh, Sport Classic pays homage to the early cars is this strip of wood on the dashboard. Now, it was one of my favorite things about the very early 911s. They have those wonderful uh, wood rim steering wheels and a nice strip of wood across the dash as the traditional sports GT would have in the early and mid-1960s. Which rather quickly gave way to the basket weave plastic. This is a very fast and very capable car. You are at the speed limit. 
in second gear and well past it once you go any further. It is also, as all modern Porsches are, and even the rear wheel drive only ones, very reassuring. This is a car, unlike the early 911s <laughs> with the short wheelbase, that flatters drivers tremendously. You know, you think you're Brian Redmond or Vic Elford when you're in this car and uh, you're simply, oh, I don't know, wait, Donald Osborne. Um, but it is one of the reasons why these cars are so popular. Uh, the fact that their owners can drive them enthusiastically on the road, take them to track days, and with a good instructor and confidence, really have a very good time and feel secure doing it. Now, the Sport Classic is a part of the exclusive manufacture that Porsche has, and they've resurrected the term Zondavinci, which is a legendary special order program that was almost a secret. Uh, you had to be somebody and know somebody to get a Zondavinci car. Um, and now, of course, all of the manufacturers of high performance cars and luxury cars all have a special needs, a special wants division. And Zondavinci is uh, unusual wants, out of the ordinary. Zonda, out of the ordinary. And it is uh, very interesting that if everybody has a Zonda, then it's not out of the ordinary anymore. But there will only be 1,250 of these built. And uh, this one, in uh, very evocative uh, Gulf livery, is uh, quite striking. Somewhat of a shame that the speedometer only goes up to 225 miles per hour. Um, I believe this is certainly a 200 mile per hour car and uh, it would be quite uh, stable and safe I think at a speed like that on the proper road in the proper circumstance. It's certainly entertaining. One of the other things which is great about this car is that when you get near the red line and near the rev limiter, it doesn't just cut out and, and, and disappoint you. It starts to lightly feather so that you're prepared to uh, make another shift without losing any momentum. Um, I know that somewhere in the display here, uh, as it is on uh, most modern 911s, is a uh, graph that shows you um, how you're using the power in terms of the power band. Uh, a mixture of uh, power and torque and uh, how you're performing. Um, I like to think that that's a gauge that only the brave put up uh, because you really don't want to know how far off the car's capability you are driving it. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it is an interesting uh, point. Uh, uh, there it is, performance and power. There is a uh, sharp drop off right at the uh, 6,000 RPM rev limit. And uh, it is a gauge that is very interesting. I would hope that there's a way to get a read out of this because you don't want to certainly watch this gauge while you're driving. Um, but it does give you an indication of relatively how little of the power you're using, even when you're driving in a very spirited way in, uh, in within the speed limits. And that's also another tribute to uh, this car. The fact that I often comment, as a matter of fact, some of you watching this channel may be sick of me saying it, but um, I often comment on the fact that, to me, a performance car has to deliver satisfaction at all points. Whether you're driving around town at 25 miles per hour or you're driving on a track at 115 or 120 miles per hour. 
if you don't get that, then it's only doing half of its job. Great cars of yesterday always delivered everything they had to all the time. And there's no reason why, with the engineering available today to manufacturers, that everybody can't do what Porsche has done with this car. And my hat's off to the engineers, to the very lucky 1,250 owners of these cars. I consider myself quite grateful to be able to sample this car. It is quite marvelous and it reminds me of the fact that there are people at Porsche who remember where they came from and hopefully those people will always have a voice. History, heritage, nostalgia are great and the references to the 2.7 Carrera with the ducktail, the 1950s and 60s touches on the exterior are wonderful. But what really makes this car work is the fact that it feels more alive than a lot of its predecessors and a lot of its brothers and sisters in the catalog. And for that, I'm very, very appreciative of the efforts of the folks at Porsche. Now, given the choice between that 1967 911S and this would be difficult. I love that 911S. It was absolutely everything. This is all of that, plus a bit more comfort and a bit more security. But I wouldn't give up the fun for anything.